It's actually a recalled item, and it will not let us sell it. We've been keeping you updated on the status of the Quest 3 Elite battery straps from when they first started not working for people who had had them to when the stores were saying they'd been recalled, when Meta themselves stopped the sale, and now Meta seems to be resuming the sale after all of the charging issues. There was a moment at first where they thought they were able to get some sort of firmware patch out, and it was unclear whether they were going to have to replace battery straps or they could just update it. Well, now, as of this week, they are resuming orders of their Elite strap with battery. For now, this is only through Meta's website, though, meaning there may be some confusion buying one anywhere else, whether it is still the initial straps that were having the issues or a replaced model. I know I personally walked into Target the day they were supposed to stop sales at Best Buy and at Target and was still able to buy one of the defective straps, which I now have. With all that said, hopefully and supposedly, these straps are fixed now, and if you order one through Meta's website, it looks like you're waiting about five days in the US or over two weeks in Europe to get these straps again. If you did get one of the initial straps, you are able to reach out to Meta to get that replaced if you are having any issues with it at all. I initially recommended if you're still in the return window, return it. And at this point, honestly, if you're considering this strap, I would say hold out, wait, see what other better options come from either third parties, or at least wait and see if these really have replaced and fixed them. Because as we saw with the Quest 2 head straps that were breaking, they stopped sale for a while. They said they figured out the issue, replaced the straps, and people were still seeing them breaking after it, but they did extend the warranty longer at least so people could get them replaced. And so it has me concerned, is that the case with these? Are these new straps? Are these straps with something replaced that fixes the charging issues they had? Or are they just resuming sales on them and they're going to continue to replace them per person as they need when they break? What do you think out there? I'd love to hear in the comments how you feel about this issue, what happened, how it was handled. And if you have one of the initial elite straps, did you have any issues? Is yours totally fine? And if it's totally fine, are you going to go through the bother of trying to replace it with one of these? Or are you going to wait and see if it actually breaks? We were on the fence for a while about it, but it looks like our channel is going to be attending CES in the coming weeks. CES, the biggest trade show of the year. All kinds of new tech gets revealed there every year. It's where we tried the PSVR 2 last year before it was launched and where I personally have my fingers crossed that there might be some Apple Vision Pro somewhere at the show, although there has been no confirmation of that yet. If you're in Vegas, you're going to CES, hit me up and let me know. There's all kinds of VR specific stuff going on there. Obviously the convention's huge, tons of content creators, VR industry insiders are all going to be there. Our friends from Pixelity, who we saw at GDC last year, are going to be there. It's really exciting, but if any of you are out there and going to be there, hit me up, let me know. A lot of people were disappointed that the Quest 3 wasn't going to come with eye tracking and some for face tracking like the Quest Pro it had. It's very expensive tech to fit into a $500 headset, but for the people who really wanted that Quest Pro, they're still making it a little bit better. The face tracking now includes your tongue. As we tested the initial face tracking, we saw opening your mouth showed, but obviously sticking your tongue out didn't work. Well, now it's in beta that it possibly could. For now, this is an open XR extension that won't necessarily work even with the meta avatars, but third party avatars can actually use their tongues now by updating their SDK version to 60. One of the Alver developers actually posted a video to their Twitter showing the tongue tracking in action. Do you want VR chat to have tongue tracking and show people what you're doing with your tongue when you're in VR? I'm not sure I do. We talked to you a bit last week about Steam Link that is now native support through Steam to play your VR games wirelessly on your Quest headset, similar to Air Link through Oculus or of course Virtual Desktop, the third party app. Well now, Steam Link has already pushed out a patch to give significant improvements to the visuals. This is thanks to them adding an advanced super sample filtering. And this is meant to improve your streaming video quality even when using high super sampling rates. Now that said, as we know, high super sampling rates on PC VR requires a very powerful computer that can keep up. So not a lot of you are going to see this benefit, although some people who were using the auto settings were getting really poor video quality because of an older setting that was still disabled accidentally actually several years ago for meta headsets. So this means if you did try Steam Link and you were shocked to see that it really wasn't looking good, it might be worth going back after this patch. For those of you out there using your Quest 3 and getting that high fidelity with a PC, are you mostly doing it through a cable or are you experimenting with these new versions of Air Link or even the current one? Let me know in the comments what's been the most reliable for you as I'm curious. We've given away tons of Quest 2s this year, a Vario Aero headset, which I've gotten confirmation has been shipped now to the winner of that. And now we still have another Quest 3 giveaway going on in case you haven't entered already. There's going to be a link in the comments, the description down below. That one's got just a couple weeks on it. So if you haven't gotten entered already, make sure you check that out. Everything with the channel has sped up so much. I just want to insert a quick thank you here in the middle of the video for those of you who don't always make it to the end, because I really appreciate all of you. We literally just got back from a trip to Atlanta, gamer convention, doing more VR 
VR stuff there. It's all really cool. Thank you. Remember that giveaway. One of the first ever VR experiences I tried was picking up a Samsung Gear VR in the really early days at a Best Buy. I was seeing that you could check it out and it was already in an Ocean Rift demo. Well, now over 10 years after that demo release, they're adding a mixed reality update to Ocean Rift. Mixed reality, of course, being one of the big selling points of the Quest 3. This adds the ability to stay in your home and open up walls, windows, cages, and see out into the world of the ocean, feeling a little safer at home, still being able to see the room and the walls around you. I personally really liked the immersion that it gave you of putting you in the water and in the game, but it's another option to check out. And it was just something that kind of interested me because we talked a lot about mixed reality and the uses so far and what's been really good with it. I will get in and try this just because I love Ocean Rift, but I feel like this isn't the best example because the best mixed reality brings things into your home with you rather than making your home feel like a cage keeping you out of that world. Although some could argue this is more realistic because you shouldn't be able to easily breathe in your home. You would need, you know, scuba gear if you were actually out in the water. So this turns your home into a submarine instead. This far in, do you find you're playing much, if any, mixed reality if you got the Quest 3 or even on your Quest 2, or are you still mostly virtual reality? Me personally, I'm in mixed reality pass through all the time in between doing other stuff in the headset. But as far as the actual games, I'm not finding myself playing the mixed reality ones myself much unless I'm showing someone else the headset. Is anyone out there using their Quest primarily for productivity? If you are, you might be interested to know that now Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint are all available on the MetaQuest store. Now these come in as progressive web apps or PWAs, which means these are still the web version of the app. So if you've tried to open an Excel document on a computer that doesn't have Excel, but you can go to the actual website and open it through Excel there, it's like that. You have to have an internet connection. The program isn't natively installed on your headset, but you're basically quickly jumping to the online web version. They show up as 2D panels in your home and you could have your Excel, your Word, your PowerPoint, you could have all this up working on it at the same time. Definitely an interesting option for someone who is using their Quest 3 alongside a PC and doesn't have multiple monitors to try this as a different way to work on it all at the same time. Although of course the interface controllers, all of that as its own complications to productivity in VR, you still do have to have the subscription also to the Microsoft services to be able to use this. Supposedly this is a stepping stone in the direction of getting the entire Windows 365 version of apps on the Quest, but we don't know when that's coming yet. So what do you think? Would you want to work on your spreadsheets in a virtual world? Last week we told you in case you missed Xbox Cloud Gaming has reached the Quest in beta that is available on the Quest App Store just like any game or anything else. You do have to have an Xbox Game Pass to utilize this, but something that people weren't all aware of that we need to mention is that you also have to have an Xbox controller. Now, sadly, these games are not adapted over to play on the Quest controller, so if you want to do that, you need to have that. It can be played through the controller through regular Bluetooth, but if you want to get lower latency, you can plug the Xbox controller directly into the USB port on the side of the Quest and actually play the games that way. Also, if you have tried so far and you're having some latency problems, they're saying, of course, being closer to your router is also going to help, but doing that with your controller may help it feel less laggy if it's actually controller lag you're having issues with. I'd love to know in the comments, we talked about this last week for you out there who have tried it. What are your favorite games you're playing on it? Do you think you'll be doing this a lot more or was it something cool to try, but you still prefer it on your TV or somewhere else? I think it's really neat because you can be playing a flat game on the couch still with the other people you know in the room, but they can be watching something else on the TV or doing something else, but it means you don't necessarily have to leave the room or in a roommate situation. It just gives you more options. We're seeing a bit more of an uptick in the VR side outside of gaming, getting some things to do, including a Jack Harlow concert coming up. And that's actually through Horizon Worlds and even other stars you may have heard of like Alice in Wonderland, a popular EDM group. Although some of these have already happened or are happening, like Alice in Wonderland actually already performed on December 18th. This is definitely a way to drive more traffic to Horizon Worlds because I feel like a concert for a group I actually knew would get me in Horizon Worlds when I haven't really been back in Horizon Worlds for any other reason for a very long time now. I know some of you out there really like it or even build for it. So how are things going in Horizon World since I've been out for a minute? What do I need to get back in and check out? Meta's other headset that we really haven't talked about much lately, their Ray-Ban smart glasses are actually potentially about to get a lot more useful. We talked about the idea of AI being integrated into these and how you could set out a bunch of ingredients on your counter that you have in the house, look at them, and it could possibly tell you a recipe for all the things that are on your counter to make a good meal out of. Well, they are launching an opt-in beta in the US that will actually bring the device's camera into AI powered object recognition. Although of course, all this information still has to be communicated to you via audio or potentially through a phone connection because there are no screens inside of the Meta glasses. I will say I actually took my set of the new Meta Ray-Bans to Atlanta with me this last weekend for the DreamHack gaming convention. And I did find it useful to be able to have them on, take video with them quickly. And the video, the audio quality are all a lot better on these than the original version. Although if you're moving and you're 
kind of bouncing as you're walking. The video can be a bit distracting, but it is really cool to be able to shoot video hands-free. But the idea of these actually doing things like live language translation, AI recognition, especially if you were in a foreign country and you couldn't potentially read signs around you, there's a lot of cool potentials for these. But I feel like personally, until they get some sort of augmented reality display inside them that can also help you see that information, it feels like they're not really going to hit that critical mass market where it would actually reach a lot of people. But I'm interested to see where it's going to take us. Our friend VR with Jasmine has actually been doing a series on the Meta Ray-Ban glasses, and she's got some helpful tips that could help you if you're interested or in the market thinking about whether or not they are useful for you. I actually have access to the multimodal AI feature, and it's been a ton of fun trying to figure out all the different ways that I can use this. For example, I've walked around and asked Meta AI to identify different dogs around my neighborhood. I've also walked around my house and asked Meta AI to identify my plant and tell me how to take care of it. So it'll tell me how frequently to water it or or what kind of sunlight it likes. I also look at different words or text in various places and ask Meta AI to translate it to me in English. I've been compiling all the different features and AI commands that I've discovered on my YouTube channel, so make sure to check out that series. It's interesting. I definitely think this gen of the Ray-Ban Metas is a lot better than last gen, but I still feel like I'm waiting for next gen when it's got the AR rolled into it too. Hopefully. We're going to be bringing you a lot more news here soon. After we go to CES, we get to see the latest and greatest tech that's coming next year. What are you interested out there? What are you waiting for right now in the VR world? I feel like we're sitting at a point we got a bunch of good games out right now actually to play, and I keep wanting to go play those instead of doing other stuff I should be doing. But it's a good time, and of course, a good time for all of us here because of all of you supporting the channel. It's been an amazing few months, so thank you once again for everyone who shows up here. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you, and I will see you in another reality.